and, and moving forward for this team, you know, looking realistically into the future, um, they are well above the, the luxury tax. I think they're called tax aprons now under the new CBA. Um, yeah, they're almost 40 million above the, the second apron, which is whatever that second line is for, for luxury tax in terms of their, their salary cap, which has some implications now in terms of second round draft picks and uh, the ability to sign mid-level exception players, um, you know, come free agency. So that limits them a lot there. Um, they have $214 million in guaranteed salary, totally tied up still when you have guys like Steph and Clay and Jordan Poole being the three biggest contracts there on their roster. Um, <clears throat> Draymond Green obviously has the extension um, eligibility up this season. And he, I believe he has a player option as well on his current contract. Um, and uh, yeah, they have some, some real decisions to make this off season. Um, there's also been some speculation that Bob Myers is probably out there as the, you know, the top executive there. So the guy that's crafted all of these, you know, deep rosters been able to, to work with, you know, pennies on the dollar to sign quality role players there in the past um, is going to be a hot commodity and among the league in terms of uh, an executive that other, other teams are going to want to pick up. So that's going to be another huge loss for them there. Uh, Iguodala also is retired now. Um, officially I know he announced earlier in the year he was done after this season so with them bowing out of the postseason he's also done um so not affecting him too much on the court but that veteran presence in the locker room I'm um, right. obviously going to be be missed there as well so it's going to be a very very interesting offseason for the the Warriors here in terms of how they can try to look to retool I know I it felt like as soon as the buzzer sounded there was like five different articles from the athletic and ESPN that came out on what they're going to do in the off season reports that they've kind of gotten here over the last couple of days about, you know, the three of them still wanting to stick together that the Warriors still have belief that they have, you know, plenty of gas left in the tank, which is true. Like, again, I think this season might've been Steph's best season of basketball, which is crazy to say. Mm -hmm. um, but I think he continues to elevate his game in all facets on the offensive side of the ball um, from a playmaking perspective, um, shooting off the dribble, driving off the dribble, finishing at the rim. I feel like he's continues to get better at that each year. Um, and so I think he has plenty left to go. Um, and, you know, Clay is only going to continue to kind of get healthier again. He'll be have another full season under his belt now. Um, so if they're able to maintain those three guys um, and try to retool around there, obviously, again, we have, they have to address the needs at the perimeter they have to address interior uh, presence and then just overall depth for this team as a whole. But yeah, big decisions for, for Golden State going into this offseason. Yeah, 100%. Um, honestly, the way Steph is playing right now, I wouldn't be opposed to them obviously keeping that core together and just saying, listen, Steph is playing at an MVP level. He's arguably the best player, one of the best players in the world right now as far as his play. We can keep these guys together and just go for it again, add some better role players around us. But as far as, as much as I was talking of Clay in his past, I wouldn't give him the extension that he was looking for, though, because I'm pretty sure he would want it like a four-year. So I don't even know the dollar amount. It was something crazy, though. But I'm not paying Clay that much. Honestly, if I would just try to – I would just try to keep the three together for as long as Steph is under contract, basically. Base everything mm -hmm. around Steph and then see where his play is towards the end of his contract and then go from there. But – Unfortunately, someone is going to have to get traded, though. Uh, people are talking about Jordan Poole, moving off of Jordan Poole. But, like, when I see it, it's just – it's tough because his contract, along with his horrible play in these playoffs yeah. and pretty much this season, it's like, if you're going to move off him, what are you going to get in return? It's like, you're selling right. him at his lowest right now. Like, maybe you can get someone to buy into, like, at his best, he's this. Or, like, in previous years before he got his contract, he's this. So, if you can get someone to bite on that, then I'd, I'd agree with it. But it's – I, I just don't know who you move him for and, like, what would you get in return. So that's a little bit interesting. But like I said, I would try my best just because Steph is playing at such a high level to keep moving forward. Obviously, not, you're not going into no rebuild, but keep moving forward, keep trying to improve the pieces around him and just hopefully you can build another championship-level team around Steph Curry and just go from there. Yeah, and between Jordan Poole and Draymond Green, I think – I would probably say it's upwards of 70%. One of them is not on the team next year. Mm -hmm. um, and even if they are both to start, 
they they've got to I think really move off of one of those contracts. So obviously if Draymond opts in, um, you know, both of them being under contract upward, basically two thirty million dollar contracts essentially. Um, but one of them is probably just going to have to get moved. Just again with how they've been able to construct their roster in the past, trying to find guys on one year deals, um, veteran minimums, mid-level exceptions, like with the new CBA, I said, being above that second tax apron, you know, that is, it's impossible for them to do. They're no longer allowed to have access to the mid-level exception because of how deep in the hole they are, you know, with the Mm -hmm. salary that they're, they're paying out. So um, there, I, I think they have to move off of one of them. I think obviously right now, Draymond probably has, higher trade value um, just because again, like you said, Jordan Poole's performance in both series of these playoffs were severely underwhelming for him as a player. And even worse, when you you factor in, he's going to be a $30 million player next year. Um, and that's only going to continue to rise as his contract goes on. So um, obviously at the same time, I can't imagine internally anyone wanting to break up that trio of Steph Clay and Draymond. So yeah, I wouldn't want to be the guy tasked with, with having to make that decision because um, there's a lot that has to factor into that. Um, and they have to – they got to make some shape there because, again, yeah. as it's situated now, their their hands are a bit tied. And, you know, they, they, they ran this season kind of with that, that mindset. We're able to get good contributions from guys like – even Chenzo, I think, was a huge pickup for them. He played great this series and played great for them all season, but it's just not enough, right? So they, they got to get moved. Yeah, he, right. They, he, he's gone. So, so yeah, it, it, they definitely got some tough decisions. Um, if I was a Warriors fan, I would just hope and pray that, like, Clay Thompson has some self awareness and realizes, like, look, I'm I'm not the same player. I'm coming off of a horrible playoff series. Like this whole four year, I don't know. Like I said, I don't know how much money is going to be. But I'm not paying Clay that much for that long, and he's already looking like a lesser version of his previous self. So hopefully he can just have some self awareness. Like I said, just tie everything around or work everything along with how long Steph is going to be on the team, and hopefully just build the roster as best you can around those pieces, and hopefully you know go for another championship. But they, yeah, they're they're in for some real real tough decisions. For sure.